Hello everybody, Dragon47 here. How is it going with all of you guys today? So, uh, we're actually going to go over something a little bit different this time in this video. I want to talk about investing into Pokemon. What Pokemon are actually worth investing in? Why you shouldn't invest? When to and when not to invest? So, the, the honest truth is, is Pokemon are expensive. They cost two moves, which costs a lot of Stardust, generally ranging between 10 to 15. I want to say 10 to 90,000, <laughs> depending on what kind of a Pokemon it is. And it's important to know what you're actually getting yourself into when you're actually spending that dust and all of that resource to really make sure that the investment that you just made into that Mon was actually worth it. So in this video, I'm going to go over a few tips and tricks on what Pokemon are particularly good to invest in and which ones are not and when and when not to invest. So, we're going to start with PvP-wise first, as opposed to anything else, because this is the hardest thing about investing, and, I mean, in general, it's just kind of hard to know what happens, especially around this time, but we'll get to that here in a moment. Investing in Pokemon for PvP varies. You have something that I like to call the genuine staples, and then you have the things that are kind of off to the side and are, you know, considered meta-relevant. So... The big difference between meta staples and meta relevancy are like these three Pokemon here that I have up on the screen. This is my non XL team, by the way, that I used for PvP, and it's really, really good. Big fan of this team. Um, like, <sighs> I don't really want to say Steelix is part of the main meta now because he kind of is and kind of isn't. He does make a 10 top spot on PV Pokey, but as of the current moment, he's not like in the main general core of the meta. That is considered to be a staple. He was never originally this good, and changes made him to be this way to where he's super good right now. So potential changes to make him worse to help balance him out are, you know, very likely. As of Vigoroth and Jellicent, they're also both extremely good, but the only issues with these two is that the meta doesn't super de duper call for them as of the current moment. They have certain good matchups against certain aspects of the meta, but compared to others, they're just registered as okay. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you don't, but that's okay. That's what this video is for. Um, so here is an example of some staple mons that are like, have been good, will continue to be good until the dawn of time, no matter what ranking they're put at. Azumarill is an obvious choice. Azumarill is a really, really good Pokemon, and so is Metacham, and so is Registeel, but we're going to focus on Azumarill as of the moment. The reason why you would want to invest into Azumarill is because this Pokemon, as one of the quote-unquote staples, as I was talking about, is like <clears throat> a Mon that has such good bulk, such good typing, and decent enough moves to where it will always be at least, at the bare minimum, decent, if not better, just because of how good it is. And that's kind of the same boat for Metacham, Registeel. They're always going to be good. There's really no way we could nerf them to make them any worse than they already are, other than maybe hitting Metacham with Psychic, and then maybe making Zap Cannon even less viable on Registeel, so people are like, ah, I don't want to run that anymore, or have them move off to Flash Cannon. And even then, those moves are suboptimal, so it's like... Not very great. The, the odds of them honestly going away are pretty slim to none. That goes exactly the same for Sableye. Might I add, every s new Mon that's coming in primarily from the Paldea region, a lot of them, if not most, just auto-lose to Purified Sableye in this game. I literally wish I could kid you not. But I'm serious, a lot of them just auto-lose to Purified Sableye. So having him around just is a good thing because he has a lot of winning matchups, a lot of good qualities about him, and he's a strong Pokemon. Lickitung. Lickitung will also continue to be good later down the road. He do be expensive with those XLs and an Elite TM, but the payoff is worth it as he's just that bulky, he has that good of a moveset, and in general, he just has so many good positive and really good neutral matchups for him. Bastiodon, kind of the same boat as Azumarill where... You're just a wall, you're just a tank, you'll always be there just because of how much bulk you have, and there's not really much else to say or do about it. It's just a literal wall that's going to win into every flying matchup. That's kind of how it is. Other quote-unquote staples could be considered some of these, and these guys are old. 
Like, uh, I know technically a few of them aren't finished yet because I'm saving up dust for the next meta. Um, uh, uh, not Croagunk, but the evolution of Croagunk. Um, Toxicroak was in one of the very first good PvP metas and was a top reigning dog for a long time. And he still is very, very good. He still has a very solid move set. He has a lot of pros going for him. The only problem is, is the meta just really isn't shaped up for him to shine as of the current moment, hence why he's ranked so low on things like PV Poke and why people look down on him. That kind of goes same for Trevenant, and because he's lost a lot of melee relevancy, he used to be a top mon at the time, and then he kind of got switch root around, and now he's just kind of not so good anymore. Kafagrigus another really good Pokemon that was good for a while and slowly had starting to fall off but he still is considered good because he has a lot of bulk and he has some pretty decent move sets to bank with it that being mainly in the form of Shadow Claw and Shadow Ball both very very good and being able to survive longer than Pokemon say like Gengar gives him a serious advantage Jellyson and Umbreon these two are kind of you know in that boat where they're sort of staples but at the same time they're like they're okay. Umbreon you really don't see a whole lot of in the open league play because there's so many things that counter it. But like in the top world championship type of stuff, you'll probably see Umbreon more than once because it not only takes out Sableye and Lickitung, which are just godly in both metas, but it also just has a lot of good neutral bulk for itself and it makes the Pokemon incredibly good. Uh, that goes same for Stunfisk. Stunfisk, again, another bulk monster on the team. Kind of the tank that eats other tanks, if I've, as I've previously said. Maybe not so much anymore. I, I know Steelix has kind of taken his spot, but this this might be temporary. I'm not so sure. It's difficult with Stunfisk because the nerf last patch actually hurt him a little bit, but it didn't hurt him to the point where he's just flat out dead. The meta just doesn't call for him as of the moment, at least not for a whole lot compared to Steelix, which is just a better Stunfisk as of the moment. But Stunfisk is still just as good as he was, just requiring a new meta to rise up. Basically, waiting for fl the day Flyers to come back for him to actually start to be able to shine, or waiting for bugs to get buffed so he can crush them under his metal foot, or flipper, or whatever that is. Um, is. I'm going to be real with you. The time to invest really is not right now. I know this is the last week of the season, and this is the time to be pushing, but at the same time, it's like... My counter-argument is this. Saying, if you look over into this season for a little bit, we only have until tomorrow, as of the time I'm recording this, to... We have like a week, all right? And on December 1st, when the season ends, they usually do a huge list of nerfs and buffs on that day, so when that does happen, all the Pokemon that are ranked in PV Poke, all of the ones that have been meta relevant, get shaken up or swapped around. Pokemon get buffed, Pokemon get nerfed, and that's how you get new and interesting metas, so you're not sitting in the same boring meta as of the years prior again and again and again and again and again. Although I won't lie, this recent one was pretty, at least in my opinion, pretty limited and not nearly as fun as the last meta. At least I felt like it was that way. Maybe it was because I actually don't have a good grass type or I didn't have an Alolan Sandslash that was worth investing in to actually make worth. But, I mean, you know, what can you do? Uh, there's not much I could do. This meta was just kind of limited for me. Ultimately, the main reason you'd want to invest into mons like these is mainly due to the fact that they will have longevity and they will continue to be at the bare minimum decent as you continue down your PvP way. I mean, we're already into the final game and for adding Pokemon into this, at least as of the current year that we're in, we're getting pretty close to starting to fill up with those things called the Paldea mons or whatever. And honestly... A lot of the new Paldeamons are not going to change the meta quite as much. And I know we're missing a few Pokemon from this current list that aren't in here yet, mainly in the form of like Aegislash, which will be coming soon, which I also will be making a video about here in the near future. Mimiku, you know, things like that, that aren't, that are supposed to be here, but aren't for some reason. Thanks, Niantic. And well, frankly, all those Pokemon are going to be here at some point or another. We just have to hold on and wait. And 
the main point of this is because the main point that I'm trying to get at is because we have all these Pokemon added to the game already and we're already starting to see the top stuff, a lot of the stuff is already going to be like, okay, this is just probably going to be good for the rest of the longevity of the game as far as I'm concerned because, you know, it is good as of right now and it has been good for since, you know, the dawn of time main Pokemon I want to point out here that, like I said, have been good at the bare minimum is like Azumarill, which has always been decent, Metacham, Sableye, Lickitung, Registeel, Bastiodon. I could even make a case and argument for Altaria, but in general, I just think... I think that invest if you have to invest, investing in these staples is going to be a better choice for you than investing into something more along the lines of the... Investing into more safe stuff like this is going to be a bit better for you, off for you rather than investing into more spicier stuff or stuff that isn't super duper PvP relevant like this. And I know I have a little bit of mixed of everything in here, but this is kind of my workshop bin where I'm going to be making a whole bunch of other different PvP mods in the future for me to just test and play around with. But like a perfect example of this was uh, Noctowl. Let me click this boy for a second. So I know this isn't a great PvP IV Noctowl. And I was considering on actually running him at one given point or time. I was going to dump the rare candies into him or whatever just to have him available to me. But uh, I decided not to because there was only two weeks left of the current meta. And when those two weeks were up, uh, right away this Pokemon got nerfed almost immediately. He was decent at the start, then became extremely good for two whole metas then he kind of died out right away. And that's kind of how I'm sitting here seeing these other Pokemon that have moved up in the meta. Things like Superior, things like Gligar, things like, you know, Steelix. They'll probably be pretty decent at the bare mo at the moment and are pretty good, but later down the road they're pretty decent they're pretty decent at the moment, but later down the road They'll probably get kicked out or, you know, removed from the meta due to them just being part of the thing that gets swapped out. Another example is Nidoqueen. Nidoqueen was a very kind of toxic, but at the same time, very good Pokemon as of the time where it was uh, running around because we needed something to deal with all of those fairy mons that were just around and were everywhere. The double charm meta was not a fun time to actually be pl in playing or enjoying PvP, even in the slightest. So having Needle Queen was like the only out you had. And what you do is you pair this with something like Swampert, so you had ground water coverage to protect your Needle Queen from other ground types. And it was just, it was just a really gross meta as of the time. Personally, wasn't a big fan of that one. But that goes all more to prove my point. Certain Pokemon will move up, and certain Pokemon will move out. That's why it's a good i that's why it's a good idea to hold on to certain things like these other random pvp mods that i pick up from time to time to you know truly think about hey will this become meta someday will this be a meta breaker at some point or time uh, things like that like oikoloin think think of this for a second this pokemon has body slam lickitung has body slam this thing has you know dig dig is what gligar has and both of those are super meta relevant the only thing this thing doesn't have is a really good fast move. And if this thing were to get, like, mud shot in the future, for example, this thing could actually see some meta-relevant play. Just because it has the bulk, it has the moves, and honestly, its typing isn't necessarily terrible. It just is a solid Pokemon. This kind of goes same for Jumpluff. This is a very, very bulky flying grass type. It's pretty decent. It has... Decent grass moves. I don't have good grass moves on it as of the moment because I don't want to invest in it. But, I mean, you know, these types of Pokemon are, like, ones you want to consider when moving forward in your PvP adventures. Now, when to invest. Like I said previously, uh, there, we only have a week left of things to invest in. When you would want to invest is... Not necessarily right away when the meta drops or when the move update drops that changes the meta. You might want.
I would honestly just wait a week, play with some of the old stuff to learn what has changed about it. And then after a week has been made, people will have come up with good team comps by then. And then is when you'd want to start investing in those good PvP Pokemon. Because with those good PvP Pokemon on your side, you'd be able to have a lot more win rates and honestly just a better time in general by learning and experiencing from what other people have already discovered. And by you yourself putting yourself in that position, you will not only be learning, but you will be putting yourself as one of those people that help discover what has changed about your mon, making, you know, data and results appear, which is very, very good. This has gotten into a very wordy and long conversation that none of you have wanted to listen to. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Oh, man. But long story short, I just wanted to make this video to just say maybe hold off on spending your dust now because in a few weeks, we're going to have a serious meta change. We're going to have a lot of moves probably added or subtracted. No, they don't take away moves. We might have new moves. We might have nerfs and buffs to other moves. So if you're looking to actually invest into a Pokemon, you might want to wait and hold off to see what happens to them before you invest. And when the time does come for the, you to invest, you want to be investing into a good one. And I'll explain that probably in a part two video to this because this has already gotten past the point of... 20 minutes long as of me recording this in the next video i'll probably talk about a tool that most pvpers use to decipher what makes their pokemon a good pvp pokemon like this lorantis that i have this is a pretty decent pretty good pvp lorantis that i picked up on gofest and that will be in a future video but without further ado i just wanted to say thank you so much to all of the people who have stuck through this long lecture video um, of me just kind of playing around on my Pokemon Go screen, showing off all my stuff. And in general, thank you for speaking, for taking the time to even watch the video. It means a lot to me. And I will continue to keep, hopefully keep working on these videos into 2024, just so long as the game hasn't died before then. And without further ado, have a happy Thanksgiving. Okay.